The air crackled with the stench of ozone and fear. Captain Rex ironclad Dalton, a man whose granite jaw and steely gaze could curdle milk, surveyed the battlefield. The alien krill, insectoid monstrosities with chitinous armor and mandibles that dripped venom, swarmed like a plague of locusts. Their energy weapons, spitting bolts of searing plasma, carved furrows through the human ranks. The krill had arrived a year ago, their ships blotting out the sun, their intentions as clear as the glint of malice in their multifaceted eyes. Conquest. Humanity, caught off guard, had fought valiantly, but the krill possessed a weapon that seemed invincible, a shimmering, iridescent force field that deflected every projectile, every energy blast. They're like cockroaches, sir, Sergeant Ramirez, a grizzled veteran with a cybernetic arm that hummed with suppressed power, reported, his voice tight with frustration. Keep coming, no matter how many we drop. Dalton grunted, his eyes fixed on the pulsating shield. It was a technological marvel, a testament to the Krill's advanced civilization. But Dalton, a man who believed in the power of human ingenuity, refused to accept defeat. We need to think outside the box, Ramirez, he said, his voice low and gravelly. They've got the tech, but we've got something they don't imagination. Dalton retreated to his command tent, a makeshift structure cobbled together from salvaged Krill technology. Inside, he spread out a holographic map of the battlefield his fingers tracing the contours of the impenetrable shield. He thought back to his childhood, to the dusty attic of his grandfather's farmhouse, filled with forgotten relics and discarded gadgets. His grandfather, a tinkerer and inventor, had instilled in him a love for the simple elegance of mechanics, the beauty of finding solutions in the most unexpected places. Dalton's gaze fell on a battered toolbox salvaged from a destroyed transport. Inside, nestled amongst wrenches and screwdrivers, lay a coil of thick copper wire, a relic from a bygone era. An idea, audacious and improbable, began to take shape in his mind. He summoned Ramirez and a team of engineers. We're going old school, Dalton announced, his eyes gleaming with a dangerous light. We're going to bypass their fancy shield with something they wouldn't expect, a good old-fashioned electromagnetic pulse. The engineers looked at him skeptically. Sir, with all due respect, one of them stammered, EMPs are crude, unreliable. They wouldn't stand a chance against a shield like that. Dalton smiled, a predatory glint in his eye. That's where you're wrong, son. We're not going to use it the way they expect. We're going to use it as a key. He explained his plan, a daring gambit that relied on exploiting a fundamental flaw in the Krill's technology. The shield, he theorized, was powered by a complex network of energy conduits vulnerable to a precisely calibrated EMP. The engineers, initially hesitant, were soon swept up in Dalton's infectious enthusiasm. They worked feverishly, their hands moving with practiced precision, weaving the copper wire into a makeshift EMP generator. As the sun dipped below the horizon, casting long shadows across the battlefield, Dalton's team was ready. They positioned the generator, camouflaged amongst the rubble, and aimed it at a weak point in the shield, a point Dalton had identified through hours of meticulous observation. Fire! Dalton roared, his voice echoing across the desolate landscape. A surge of energy coursed through the generator, sending a pulse of electromagnetic radiation towards the shield. The krill, caught off guard, watched in stunned silence as the shield flickered, then sputtered, then vanished with a deafening crack. The human soldiers, their faces alight with disbelief and elation, unleashed a torrent of fire. The krill, their defenses shattered, were routed. They fled in disarray, their ranks broken, their morale shattered. Dalton, his face grim, but his eyes alight with triumph, watched the retreating krill. He knew this was only the beginning. The krill were a formidable enemy, and their defeat was only a temporary setback. But for now, humanity had won, and in the aftermath of the battle, a new legend was born. The legend of Captain Rex Ironclad Dalton, the man who had outsmarted the Krill with a rusty coil of copper wire and a belief in the power of human ingenuity. The Krill, humbled and awestruck, laid down their arms. They had witnessed something they had never seen before. 
the audacity, the ingenuity, the sheer will to survive that defined humanity. Many of them, their eyes filled with a glint of defeat, but also admiration. The Krill surrender was swift and absolute. Their mandibles clicked in a rhythmic clatter, a sound that to human ears resembled a mournful dirge. They laid down their weapons, their chitinous armor glinting under the dying light of the twin suns. Dalton, ever the pragmatist, saw an opportunity. He ordered his men to secure the Krill prisoners and began inspecting the battlefield. His gaze fell upon a structure at the heart of the Krill encampment, a monolithic obsidian obelisk humming with an eerie, internal light. What's that? Ramirez asked, his cybernetic arm whirring as he adjusted his grip on his rifle. I don't know, Dalton replied, his voice hushed with a sudden sense of foreboding, but I have a feeling it's important. He approached the obelisk cautiously, his hand hovering over the hilt of his energy pistol. As he drew closer, the humming intensified, vibrating through the soles of his boots, resonating deep within his bones. The krill, their eyes wide with a mixture of fear and reverence, watched Dalton's every move. It's the seer, one of them rasped, his voice a dry, crackling whisper. The eye of prophecy, it shows us the future. Dalton, intrigued, reached out and touched the obelisk. A jolt of energy surged through him, a blinding white light that seared his retinas. Visions flooded his mind, chaotic and disjointed. Images of swirling galaxies, of colossal battleships, of a being both terrifying and magnificent. Then a single image crystallized, burned itself into his consciousness. A creature, vaguely humanoid in shape but grotesquely insectoid, its exoskeleton shimmering with a thousand iridescent hues. It wore flowing robes of ruby red, its multifaceted eyes burning with an unholy light. Beware! The creature's voice boomed in Dalton's mind, a voice that seemed to echo from the depths of time itself. You have awakened a power beyond your comprehension. The future is not set in stone. It is a river, ever-changing, ever-flowing. But now the currents have shifted. Darkness approaches, and you, Captain Dalton, are at the heart of the storm. The vision faded, leaving Dalton gasping for breath, his mind reeling. He looked around, his heart pounding in his chest. The krill were staring at him, their expressions a mixture of awe and terror. Dalton knew with a chilling certainty that his life had just changed forever. He had stumbled upon something ancient and powerful, something that could reshape the galaxy, and he had no idea what it meant. The krill, sensing the shift in power, pledged their allegiance to Dalton and the humans. They spoke of a prophecy, of a chosen one, who would unite the galaxy against a coming darkness. Dalton, still reeling from his vision, was hesitant. He was a soldier, a leader, not a prophet. But the Krill were adamant. They saw in him the embodiment of their hopes, their salvation. Thus, the Star Striders, a new breed of galactic defenders, was born. A motley crew of humans and Krill, united by a common purpose, a shared destiny with some bugs to work out with the crew getting along. This motley crew might just change the course of future events, something the Dark Ones had not anticipated. Dalton at their helm knew that the seer's warning was not to be taken lightly. The future was uncertain, fraught with danger. But he was determined to face it head on, to protect humanity and the galaxy from the darkness that threatened to consume them all. The adventure had just begun.